Hi everybody! Um, welcome to Youth Group Online. This is really exciting. It's the first time we've ever done a pre-recorded message um, and so we're really excited to get to do it with you guys. My name is Claire, in case you don't know. I am your youth director here and um, we're just really excited to uh, start something brand new. Uh, sometimes life hands you a kind of challenge and it's fun to adapt and, and restructure things. So we're gonna be delivering you a message on Tuesdays each week. Um, so we're calling it Talk Tuesdays, and then we're gonna be doing some worship on Wednesdays. So Talking Tuesdays, Worship Wednesdays, easy to remember, but don't forget to check in at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday and Wednesday um, for new updates and a little bit of live posting from Brian and I, your Four Seas Youth staff. But anyway, thanks for tuning in for um, your message this week. Um, I want to talk a little bit about hope. I think there's kind of not more of an appropriate time to be speaking about hope, and so that's what we're going to be kind of heading towards today. So, uh, this last weekend, I was in New Jersey. I was helping my parents move some stuff around. They're um, selling their house, which is exciting. So we were hanging out in New Jersey, and that's where I grew up, and uh, we didn't end up going into Manhattan, uh, but we were just swapping a lot of old stories as a family and kind of chatting about um, what life in New Jersey used to be like. And it just got me thinking about all these like random adventures that I had in New York. And um, it's kind of crazy. Did you know that uh, the Empire State Building, big famous pointy building in New York, kind of famous in a lot of movies, all those kinds of things, um, site of a lot of middle school field trips uh, for those of us on the East Coast. But so the Empire State Building in New York, um, when it's really, really, really windy, um, or there's a really big storm going on, the building actually sways a little bit. It kind of gives and ebbs and flows a little bit, which is kind of wild, right? And I have a friend of mine who actually worked in the building, um, in the Empire State Building, and he would post on his Instagram stories um, when it was super windy and stormy out, and you could hear the building creaking and groaning. It'd be like, in the wind. It's kind of wild. Um, and I think that would be really, really scary if you were actually in the building and the building's physically moving or creaking and groaning. Um, if you didn't understand how buildings were built, right? How they were designed, right? These kinds of str uh, strong and tall towers were designed to give and sway and ebb and flow a little bit um, without creating any damage to the building during storms or high winds. Um, the most important feature of that tower um, that the tower possesses uh, is its strong foundation. So the way that the tower is built, the way that the Empire State Building is built, right, is that it has a strong, deep foundation into the ground, and then it's designed to allow for a little bit of give, allow for a little bit of creaking and groaning as the high winds kind of crash against the building, right? Um, and I think some of us might find ourselves in a situation where life kind of feels like we're in the middle of a storm right now where life kind of feels like these kind of gale force winds are pushing up against us and we're kind of unsure of which way to go. We can feel ourselves um, kind of anchored, but but we're being rocked a little bit by everything that's going on. And so if you're ever feeling anxious, if you're ever feeling unsure, if you're ever feeling worried um, about the future or about what's going on, the best place to turn to is your Bible. So if you've got a Bible with you, I'd love for you to open it um, to Hebrews chapter 10. Um, we're going to be reading today from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 23. And I say this every week to our students when we're in person together. And so even though I'm talking to an empty room, I'm going to say it again. If you don't have a Bible that you love, if you don't have a Bible that um, you feel like is helping you grow in your faith, that doesn't have the study tools that you want, or it was one that you have when you were a little kid, but now you're um, growing up and you want to go deeper into your faith, please um, message us on Instagram. Please email Brian and I. We would love to get you a Bible ver or a Bible that you love, a Bible that's helping you grow, um, and we can ship it to your house during this kind of social distancing time. So uh, please don't hesitate to take us up on that offer, even though we can't gather together. So today we're going to be reading from Hebrews chapter 10, um, verses 19 to 25. I think I might have said 23 earlier, but we're going to be reading all the way to 25. So um, we've provided the words for you here on the screen, and uh, we're just going to read um, along together so you can follow along with the words on the screen or in your own Bibles. But here we go, Hebrews chapter 10, 19 to 25. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that is, his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, 
Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So Hebrews is already a super amazing book, but I just love this passage in kind of response to everything that's been going on, right? So back in the day, God's people used to rely on priests to act as middlemen between them and God, the Father, right? Um, so they would go to the priest and be like, okay, can you pray about this? Can you offer this up um, to God? Because they just weren't able to bring that directly to God himself. But when Jesus came along, he changed everything. And now Jesus is our high priest. Jesus has replaced what used to be an earthly role, and he has taken on that role to now be our direct intercessor, our direct connection between God, the Father, um, and us. So we have direct access to God now, right? We don't have to socially distance ourselves from the Trinity, from God. Um, and that comes because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And that should bring us incredible hope, right? That we, the thought that we can walk boldly before God in prayer, that we can come to him with whatever is going on in our hearts and not need some middleman, not need some kind of set of rules or a specific routine to get there. We just get to go before God with everything that's on our hearts, unfiltered as it's coming in and presented to him should give us an incredible sense of hope, an incredible sense of peace, right? We as Christians, we as believers, we as people saved by Jesus Christ should have that same peace that people have when they're standing in or on a high tower, right? Winds blowing up against it, right? The storm is howling, right? And we might feel the building shift a little bit, but we ourselves can know that we are safe because of that foundation. We as Christians have that strong foundation um, in Christ Jesus. We have that same um, kind of steadiness um, that the buildings do, right, when we put our faith in Jesus Christ. And so we might find ourselves kind of moving a little bit. We might find ourselves troubled. We might find ourselves anxious. We might find ourselves frustrated. This um, shift in our lives has caused a lot of disruption. You have a right to be frustrated. I mean, look at what we're doing now, right? We're not meeting together in person, right? Things are changing. Um, but instead of feeling hopeless or undone in those circumstances, um, we can bring all of our concerns, we can bring all of our fears before the Father and trust that we have someone who is a promise keeper on the other side of that prayer. We have someone who is faithful, we have someone who is for us, and um, even though we might be feeling unnerved by everything that's going on, even though we don't know kind of what the future looks like, God is not rattled right now. Guys, God is not unsteady. God is not like, oh no, we're out of toilet paper. Like we don't have to be afraid because our father is not afraid. And if you do feel fear, right, you have direct access to the one who can silence that, to the one who can bring you peace. God is saying to you right now, on the other side of heaven, right, give me your, give me your stress and your fear and your worry and your uncertainty. And I'm going to give you peace and I'm going to give you hope and I'm going to give you confidence, right? That's that's the trade that God wants to make for you right now. And we talked a little bit about, Brian and I earlier, right, about leaning into your leaders right now. Guys, like, use FaceTime, use social media, um, use all those kinds of things to stay connected. Right? We would encourage you to do that. We would encourage you to reach out um, to your leaders. Um, they want to hear from you. They want to be walking alongside you. They want to be helping you to fight off sin as we find ourselves kind of bored and isolated, right? They want to be there. But also know that you do not need your leaders. You do not need Brian or I. You don't need a pastor, right, to, to pray or to have access to God. That Jesus is our high priest. He is the one um, that intercedes for us all. And so just like I would encourage you after this message is done, after you've kind of shut off your phone, to just find a quiet place to sit in your room or outside and just try praying to God. Remember that... Praying doesn't have to be some big, long Shakespearean soliloquy, right? Prayer is just a conversation between you and your creator, right? 
somebody who loves you more than you could possibly ever know, somebody who is for you. And so use this opportunity. No one's around. Nobody's watching, right? Just maybe take a risk and, um, and try to connect to God with how you're feeling. Try to be um, vulnerable in this way. I love, um, I love that uh, verse in um, chapter 10, it's verse 22, when it says, Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings. Right? Um, we, we can approach God sincerely. We can approach God confidently. We don't have to be confident about our circumstances, but we can be confident about Christ. Um, and so I would just really encourage you um, to do that. You are a high tower. You might be kind of ebbing and flowing right now, but your foundation is deep. Your foundation is strong. Um, and you were built and created to withstand those high winds, to withstand that pressure, to withstand that storm with that foundation in Christ Jesus. So um, Brian's going to come on next, and he's got some questions for you um, that I would just encourage you to use as a time of self-reflection, um, but also don't hesitate to text your leaders and be like, hey, I really kind of want to unpack this question a little bit more. Here's kind of how I responded to the question. Do you think we could talk about it? Um, your leaders love you and they miss you and they want to stay connected with you. Um, ask you, Brian and I. So please um, take a little bit of time. Um, don't ignore this. Don't brush past this. Um, take just a few minutes to think through these questions. Um, pray. And then um, if you feel so inclined, kind of reach out to your leaders. But we love you and we miss you. It is not the same talking to a standalone camera as it is talking to all of you. So it's hard to be here without you. Um, but we do not have to be afraid and we can continue to be scattered together because of the body of Christ that we're a part of. So miss you guys. Um, hope we can see each other soon. Thanks. Cool. Well, now um, we'd love to just give you some questions uh, that you can kind of Ponder on yourself. Uh, clearly, you're not in small groups because uh, you can't come here and do small groups. You can't go out and do small groups. But uh, we would encourage you, uh, if you have your small group's phone numbers, text them. Start talking with each other if you want to FaceTime or do whatever to stay connected as a small group. Um, but especially, we have some questions for you. Uh, Claire just talked about some hard stuff. Um, and, and as you're hearing this, uh, as you think about this, one question that comes to mind is, is your faith foundation actually God. She talked about the building that sways that has a foundation. Is your foundation in God? Or has your foundation maybe been your identity at school that's mm -hmm. now shaken? Um, so think about your foundation being in God. Uh, and think about uh, truly in these times where maybe you're sitting in your room and you're kind of scared. Uh, where is your foundation? Um, another one, uh, as you're sitting maybe alone in your house or with your family that you maybe don't get along with, um, how are these times testing you and strengthening you and challenging you to grow in your faith in Christ? Uh, maybe you felt like you were really close to Christ until you're sitting at home for the third day in a row and you realize that, man, I'm not actually that close to Christ. Um, so I would encourage you all to think inward on how are these times challenging you in your faith? I know for me, I'm just sitting at home and I'm realizing that um, sitting at home may lead to wasted time. So how am I using this time at home to connect to Christ? What are ways that you can connect to Christ at home in these times? Um, the final thing we want to ask you guys is, do you feel like you can approach God without an intercessor? Do you feel like you can come to God without me or Claire or your small group leaders there to help you? Because the answer we hope you find out is yes. God wants you to be connected to him. You don't need someone there in between you and him. Uh, back in the Bible times, that was true, but now we have Christ that came to us so that we can approach Christ. So, uh, as you're maybe sitting at home watching this video, uh, just take some time to think about that. Uh, think about, have you ever come to Christ alone? Have you ever actually come to Him? Uh, we encourage you, uh, wherever you're at right now, to just come to Christ uh, and be with Christ in these moments.